Iceland is a stable democracy with a high standard of living, and until recently, extremely low unemployment and government debt. We had the complete infrastructure of a modern society. Clean energy, food production, fisheries, with a quota system to manage them. Good health care, good education, you know, clean air, uh, not much crime. Uh, it's good, a good place for families to live. We had almost an end of history status. But in 2000, Iceland's government began a broad policy of deregulation that would have disastrous consequences. First for the environment, and then for the economy. They started by allowing multinational corporations like Alcoa to build giant aluminum smelting plants and exploit Iceland's natural geothermal and hydroelectric energy sources. Many of the most beautiful areas in the highlands with the most spectacular colors are geothermal. So nothing comes without consequence. At the same time, the government privatized Iceland's three largest banks. The result was one of the purest experiments in financial deregulation ever conducted. Finance took over um, and uh, more or less wrecked the place. In a five-year period, these three tiny banks which had never operated outside of Iceland, borrowed $120 billion, 10 times the size of Iceland's economy. The bankers showered money on themselves, each other, and their friends. There was a massive bubble. Stock prices went up by a factor of nine. Uh, house prices more than doubled. Iceland's bubble gave rise to people like Jan Asger Johannesson. He borrowed billions from the banks to buy up high-end retail businesses in London. He also bought a pinstriped private jet, a $40 million yacht, and a Manhattan penthouse. Newspapers always had the headline, this millionaire bought this company uh, in the UK or in Finland or in, in France or wherever, uh, instead of saying this millionaire took a billion dollar loan to buy this company and he took it from your local bank. The bank set up money market funds and the banks advised deposit holders to withdraw money and put them in the money market funds. The Ponzi scheme needed everything it could. Huh? American accounting firms like KPMG audited the Icelandic banks and investment firms and found nothing wrong. And American credit rating agencies said Iceland was wonderful. In February 2007, the rating agency decided to upgrade the banks to the highest possible rate, triple A. It went so far as the government here, traveling with the bankers as a, as, as a PR show. When Iceland's banks collapsed at the end of 2008, unemployment tripled in six months. There is nobody unaffected in Iceland. So a lot of people here lost their savings. Yes, that's the case. The government regulators who should have been protecting the citizens of Iceland had done nothing. You have two lawyers from the regulator going down to a bank to talk about some issue. When they approached the bank, they would see 19 uh, SUVs outside, <laughs> outside the bank, right? So you enter the bank and you have the 19 lawyers sitting uh, in front of you, right? Very, very well prepared, uh, uh, ready to kill any argument you make. And then if you do really well, they'll offer you a job, right? One third of Iceland's financial regulators went to work for the banks. 
but this is a universal problem. Huh? In New York, you have the same problem, right? 